Hi there! In the previous lesson, we wrote some lines of code and created our first Python program. Before we move forward, there are some important concepts we need to understand. But before we start, let me change the font size of the idle so you can see it a bit better. If you want to change it, you can just go to Options, Configure Idle. Here, you can change the font face, the font size, you can adjust the indentation, you can manage extensions, you can change the colors of specific things like errors and highlighted text and stuff like that. So I'll just put the font as 29, I think it's gonna be better. All right, let's begin with statements. Let's use that print function again to display the hello world message. What we just wrote is a statement. It's an instruction for the computer to execute. A Python program is made of multiple statements. That program we created in the previous lesson had two statements. Here in the command line, we can only write one statement at a time. Every time we write a statement, it's going to be executed before we can write more statements. For this reason, the command line will only be useful for testing purposes. If you want to learn how a function works, just come here, type in what you want and test if it works. It's very easy and quick. You can also get some help from the command line. Let's say I'm not sure how to use the print function. I can type help and then print and I will get some explanation. Of course, if you type Python print function on Google, you have much better answers. But it's good to know that we have this option here. So to actually do something useful with Python, we're gonna have to write programs. Let's create a new one now, but before that, let's create a folder in our desktop to organize our Python programs. So I just create a new folder here. I'm gonna call it Python course. Okay, let's go to file, new file. Let's write a program that calculates the average of two numbers. So the first thing we're gonna do is let the user know what this program is about. So let's write our first statement. Now we should tell the user what those numbers will be. So let's write our second statement. I'm gonna use the numbers four and eight. So we just wrote two statements. Note that what separates them is a line break. If you're familiar with other programming languages, you're probably wondering where are the semicolons? In most programming languages, we use semicolons to separate statements. So we would do like this. In Python, what indicates the end of a statement is a line break. So a new line means a new statement. Semicolons are not forbidden though. You can use it to separate statements on one line. So we could do it like this. Even though it's allowed to do this, this is not very common. Python programmers normally choose to use the line break convention. So this is how we're gonna write our programs. Another thing to be aware of is that Python is sensitive to indentation. So a simple space like this in the beginning of the sentence will result in an error. And why is that? Well, indentation is serious business in Python. It is not used only for organizing your code. You will see that conditionals, loops, and functions are actually guided by the indentation. So we can only use it in the right places, as we will learn a bit later. Another important aspect of the Python language is that it is case sensitive. So if we type print with a capital P, we can see that the color has changed. So it's not recognizing it as a function like above. And if we run the program, it's going to result in an error. Let's now calculate the average and print the result. So we can write the average is, and then we could write a new statement below. But actually, the print function can be used to print multiple things at a time. So we can just use comma here, and we can add another text or even a number. 
So let's add the result of that calculation. As we saw in the previous lesson, we can do math operations here. So let's put 4 plus 8. And now we can use the forward slash to make a division. We're going to learn more math operations when we talk about numbers. Before we continue, if we do it like this, this is not going to be right. If you know about the hierarchy of math operations, you know that first it's going to make the division. So it's going to be 8 divided by 2 equals 4. And then it's going to be 4 plus 4. And the result is going to be 8. If we want the sum to go first, we can put it inside parentheses. So it's going to execute this first and then it's going to divide the result by 2. So we will have the correct average. Let's save this program and see if this is working. I'll put it in that folder we just created. I'm going to name it 01. So we have an order of the programs we'll create. And I'm going to name it average. Let me put the window a bit smaller before we run it. And now let's just press F5. Our program is working, but it's not very useful yet because every time we run it, it's going to use the same numbers and print the same result. That's a bit boring. Wouldn't it be great if the program asked the user for the numbers? This way our program will be dynamic and interactive. And that's exactly what we're gonna do in the next lesson. I'll see you then.